Hey everyone, welcome back to the Beamer Barn. Today I'll show you how to replace the rod bearings on your S54 motor. Now this is part two of a video series where we first removed the oil pan. So if you wanna see how to do that, go ahead and click the link up above. But now we're gonna be replacing the rod bearings, which are a really common service item on the S54 motor. This particular M3 we're working on today has 145,000 miles, and we can't exactly tell if the rod bearings have been replaced before, but we're gonna find out by the end of this episode. So before we get into to the job which is pretty simple just replacing a part i'm going to show you guys some of the strict guidelines you have to be aware of before you get into things as well as some of the tools that you're going to need as well so without further ado let's go ahead and get right to the video so in front of me here, we have some really important things that we're gonna need for this job. Now in the previous episode, I showed you guys oil pan gasket, the rod bearings and the rod bolts, but now we have some new things in front of us here that I'd like to go over. Number one being the things that we need to torque down the rod bolts, and that's gonna be a torque angle gauge. This thing is what measures how many degrees you've turned your wrench when you're trying to get a certain like clock on the torque of a bolt. So that's something specific to BMW rod bolts is that they need to be torqued to a certain degree after a certain Newton meter as well. So it can get a little bit complicated, but if you go with ARP bolts, for example, you wouldn't need this. You would just need a torque wrench. And that's what we have right in front of me here. This thing is made by Tecton. I'll go ahead and put a link to it down below. And this is the 3 8 version. They come in a couple different sizes, but I think this one is gonna do good for this job here because we need to go from five Newton meters to 30 Newton meters. Then right here, we have some Plasti Gauge. This is something that engine builders use to just check clearances. This isn't exactly something to measure by or go by 100% but it will give you a ballpark estimate to know that your rod bearings are the right size. Now getting to the rod bearings, I have some documents here from BMW on this service with some really important facts that we need to go over. Now number one being that there are two rod bolts for this job depending on the year that your engine was produced. If it was made pre-2003, it's going to have the A type of bolt which has a larger head on it and a larger M11 thread. If your car was made in 2003 forward, it likely has the bolts that are Torx head and they have an M10 thread to them. So they're a little bit smaller, which means the corresponding piston rod is different. So you cannot interchange these bolts and it's important that you know which ones are in your car before you start this job. Now, the good thing is that the early model bolts, they're actually 100% reusable according to BMW service procedures. But the late model bolts, 2003 forward, they do need to be replaced when you remove them after you know servicing the car. So if you have the 2003 Ford bolts, I'd consider getting ARP bolts because I think they're a little bit cheaper. But anyways, moving on to the rod bearings, the rod bearings themselves go in a specific direction. So there is a top and a bottom and they're actually color coded. So the blue coating goes into the top of the connected rod and then the red bearing goes into the bottom. So you see here on the bearing on the sides, there's just like little Sharpie marks or paint marks that indicate if it's a top or bottom. They're also indicated by the part number on the box, but something to be aware of so that you cannot mix these up when you install them. And it's important that you don't because it would result in like catastrophic engine failure. And then the torquing sequence I wanted to mention is different between the two types of bolts. It's 5, 30, and 70 degrees for the pre-cars and 5, 30, and 105 Newton meters for the post-2003 cars. So a couple of differences right there. Be sure that you know your torque specs before you start this job or at least before you install and tighten these bolts because you don't want to mix these two up. Again, unless you're using the ARP bolts which have a different torquing sequence completely. So the last thing too is the oil pump. It has to come out so I have some torque specs here but we'll get to that later on in the video. For now, I think you guys get the idea. We also have some assembly lube to put on the bearings. We have some extra bolts here. These are actually the wrong ones for this engine but it's okay because our car is an early model 2001 so we can reuse the bolts we just have to pay attention to the location in which they are installed because they have to stay in that exact location when it goes back together so let's go ahead now and get under the car and get right to work Now during this video, I am gonna give you guys some commentary and some helpful tips throughout the process of removing and installing these rod bearings. This beginning part here, it's just removing some of the oil pickup tubes, really simple and basic. But in a second, we're gonna figure out a big problem with the oil pump, but I'll let you guys see that in a moment. For now, enjoy. 
Well, I was about to pull off the oil pump there, but I realized that one of the bolts was a little bit rounded off the lower one right here by the pickup. And I took a picture of it before I even started filming because I wanted to know that, you know, it was rounded off and just kind of document it, knowing that it would be a problem. And here I am, you know, with the six millimeter Allen, that's supposed to go into those bolts. And that one particularly, I cannot get it to budge free. I think, I'm not sure, but I think I even felt this thing roll inside of the Allen head of that bolt. So pretty sure that thing is stripped and it's not going to come out anytime soon unless, you know, you're going to take a Dremel to it. Uh, but instead of doing that, we're just going to leave the oil pump on. We've got the strainer lines off, the pickup lines. Um, and with the position here, because I turned the motor over a second ago, I should be able to access the rod bearing cap pretty easily from this angle right here. Um, so we're going to start by doing the corresponding rod bearing cap, which is going to be cylinder six, because remember, uh, for each cylinder, there's a corresponding cylinder that matches it because the cylinders are always synced up in pairs. So the first and the sixth cylinder right now, we have good access to get the rod bearing cap off. We're going to go ahead, remove those bolts, remove the rod bearings, inspect them, and then go over the sequence in order to check the clearance of our new bearings. Now there are two types of rod bolts, so remember to have the right socket for your engine. But like you can see here, I like to get the rod bolts a little bit backed off, then break free the lower part of the connecting rod, and then back the bolts out completely to take the lower half out. Just want to be as careful as possible. Then to get the top bearing out, you're going to push the piston up into the cylinder. And like you can see here, I'm using a pick to get underneath the bearing. And that's what I do to get the bearing out and then carefully remove it from the engine. All right, we've got our first bearings out. This is going to be from cylinder six. And I left the bottom bearing inside the cap here. And this is the top bearing that goes right into the connecting rod of the piston. And remember these bolts here, since I have a pre-2003 car, you're going to want to mark them so that you can coordinate them to the cap like you see there and that way you don't mix up the locations of the bolts and just take one bearing set at a time you don't need to worry about taking two cylinders off at the same time so we've got our bearings here and remember this is the top component you can see these are actually in pretty good condition and uh, just the top bearing shell is the one that has some signs of wear. You can see that by like the polished area. And this is directly on the surface where it's going to endure the most force from the combustion of the fuel and cylinder. And remember that pushes the connecting rod down with the combustion and the resistance met by the crankshaft is what gives you that wear. So the bottom end of the bearing doesn't have as much wear. But like I said, these do look like they're in really good condition for 145,000 miles. So maybe they were replaced by the dealer at some point with some upgraded rod bearings, or should I say the updated ones from the dealer. But you can see that a brand new one looks like a matte surface. So that's how you're able to tell just how worn these are is when they get polished. Um, on the outside edges, though, there is some of that wear through the coating of the bearing. But I think that's not to be worried about because that's just from the bearing wearing into, I guess, its natural position uh, once it's installed. But anyways, what we're gonna do now is we're going to remove the bearing from the shell here, install our new bearings, make sure we don't get the order mixed up, and then we're gonna put a little bit of that plastic gauge, like a little string, on the bottom cap here, and then we're gonna tighten it using the OEM sequence to the crankshaft, and that is going to give us a plastic gauge to reference to see that these are the correct size bearings and make sure the clearance is good with the crankshaft. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now I'm gonna cut off a little bit of plastic gauge here since we're gonna be testing the clearance like I said, but we're also gonna be adding some assembly lube to the top of the rod bearing since we're not gonna be able to do that later. And wouldn't you know, as I was trying to show you guys the assembly procedure, the steering shaft dropped into the way of the camera. 
Damn it, that steering shaft got in the way of me installing the bearing cap. Trying to show you guys, you can see a little bit of a mark there where the plastic gauge was before, but what we're gonna do is actually grab it right here and we're gonna go to the crank where it actually stuck and we're gonna measure and see what our clearance looks like. So here we can see on the journal of the crankshaft, it's a lot more clear that plastic gauge and just how much it's spread out. So the factory specs give us a range that we want to get between 0.03 and 0.07. And using the plastic gauge meter, which again, this is just for estimating purposes, we can see it lands a little bit skinnier than the 0.03 mark. Well, according to our fancy plastic gauge, I'd say that we have a good clearance on the new bearings. So I'm going to go ahead and continue with the installation. And this time, I promise you, I'm going to show you guys the torquing sequence for these bearings because it can be a little complicated. But trust me, I'll walk you guys through it step by step. So step number one that we definitely need to do is going to be putting the assembly lube on the bearing because for the first couple seconds of startup, that bearing is not going to have any oil pressure. Now, there is a little bit of plastic gauge left on the crank journal, so we're going to go ahead and clean that up first and then install the lower portion of our connecting rod shell. Then the procedure tells us to kind of snug up the bolts. You want to get to five newton meters first. And then as you can see here, we're going to do 30 newton meters on the torque wrench. Now there are two different ways to use the angle gauge. And the first one here I'm going to show you is if you just use a surface, you can turn the angle gauge, turn your wrench, and it's going to show you how many angle or how many degrees you've gone. Now this is just one way of doing it and I did this on one of the bolts because you know based off of where you're tying that bolt you might have the ability to do this, you might not. So I held the needle there up against the bell housing of the transmission and then I was able to determine what 70 degrees was. Now the other way which I'm showing you here is to set 70 degrees on your dial and keep things exactly relative so that when you go and turn the gauge back in the direction that you're tightening the bolt, it'll hit the surface that you calibrated it to when you get to the certain angle that you set it at. So here, that's what I'm doing on the number one. I'm just setting the needle up against the bell housing, but then keeping the wrench in the same spot and moving the needle out to 70 degrees so that when I go and tighten this bolt, it'll end up exactly at 70 degrees like I set it. So there you go, we've got our first rod bearings done. You can see I even put them on our nice sheet here, cylinder number six. And now what we need to do is cylinder number one, cause like I said, it matches up to six and it's a little bit tight for me. So I'm not gonna be able to show you guys how that's done, but we'll go ahead and service all of these, turn the motor over and service two at a time. And then finally, we should be able to fill up this sheet and take a look at how bad the rod bearing wear was on this 145,000 mile motor. Eventually. Well, we finished up with the rod bearings and now we can finally take a look at all of them side by side and determine what kind of condition they're in. And honestly, I'm a little surprised here because I don't see any wear that looks like it would be down to like the copper on these bearings, but I do see, you know, different layers of the bearing material, which tells me that there is some inconsistent wear along the bearings. And so, you know, it's hard to say why or exactly how much longer these bearings would have lasted. But like I said, I don't see anything that goes really down to the core. These do look like they could have been replaced before. This is an early model car, like an early model year motor. So maybe the rod bearings were replaced under warranty at some point. And uh, we're just going to be replacing them again so that the car can do another 50, 100,000, 200,000 miles with the peace of mind that these are done. We're going to go ahead and move on to installing the last pieces for the oil pump. We didn't get to remove it, but we do have to install the pump gear as well as the two pickup tubes. And then we're going to be installing these new Turner Motorsport engine mounts. These are like a 70 durometer bushing, if I'm correct. So they're definitely stiffer than a rubber, but they're not completely solid. They do have like a polyurethane core to them. We'll install those because it's an opportune time to do it along with, you know, the all pan gasket and such and go ahead and start buttoning up the rest of the motor now. And while we're still on the topic of the rod bearings and I have them here in front of me, one recommendation I want to make to you guys is to let your cars warm up before you drive them because about 80 to 90% of engine wear is done in the first five to 10 minutes of engine warm up sequence because of course the metal components of the motor, they're not all the same size and they're made to operate at operating temperature. That's why it's called that. So while they're getting up to operating temperature, some items like 
like the rod bearings, they can endure more damage or, or more wear if you're going to be driving the car in that period. So something to keep in mind to make your rod bearings last as long as possible, or just overall on any BMW motor, I would recommend laying the car warm up before you take it for a drive to avoid issues like this. So like I said, let's go ahead and get back to work and reassemble everything. So that's gonna conclude our video for today and I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. There is a break-in period for these rod bearings so that's something to be aware of. You're supposed to drive the first 1200 miles under 5500 RPM. So I'd take that into consideration and drive the car pretty lightly, but then after that period, be sure to rip on it. So if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like or comment down below. Subscribe if you're new and you haven't yet. And as always, we will see you in the next video.